So while making my my Assassin's Creed uh, ranking video, I was you know going through Assassin's Creed games, replaying through them, and um, came across you know a thought, like my own thoughts when I came across it. Like I freaking saw something. It's like you know what? But I was watching like some of like the intro scenes and how much Desmond is involved in like the first few games, and just made me think about something. Desmond is an interesting character. He wasn't a massively popular character because the average AC player just wanted to stay in the Animus and play as the Assassins. Uh, out of the Animus moments have always been talked about as the worst parts of Assassin's Creed games. But when Ubisoft killed Desmond off, the fanbase actually hated it. It was like a, a, a weird turn, which probably confused Ubisoft. Ubisoft thought like, hey, y'all don't like the out of the Animus stuff, so we'll just kill off Desmond. But the fanbase actually hated that because the fanbase, as much as they don't like air quotes, the Animus situations, they do still like Desmond. They still found him interesting. But one of the reasons why, you know, the killing Desmond that's an awful such a, a poorly viewed thing was it was kind of sudden. You know, it, it it showed how poorly written his death was when it, when it, when you think about how he died. But also because it meant we weren't going to get we thought we'd get. At that time, we had expectations because viewers, gamers, whoever, when you play a video game and you get these cliffhangers and things like that, you feel like you know what the future is going to hold for something. And when it came to Desmond, we thought a game set in modern times where you play as, as just Desmond was in the works, where it's like a plan by Ubisoft because each game kind of like lended to the thought process that at some point you would play as Desmond. Every Assassin's Creed game, like literally every Assassin's Creed game leading up to AC3 felt like it was a build up to a Desmond game. And the Desmond game was pretty much like the last game. Like we thought like this would be the climax. The climax of Assassin's Creed would be this Desmond game. Clearly Ubisoft didn't want there to be a last game because they want to milk the franchise to where we are now. With 14 console man games and some 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 uh, handheld games as well. Um, if you want to include Liberations as a console man game, that's why I said 14, not 13. But anyways, you know, this also doesn't include Chronicles, which you know is also on console. Yeah, you know, Assassin's Creed China, Russia, and India. Once again, we are at a fatigue wall, and it's, and it's obvious that the original creators of the game didn't intend for the franchise to still be going on to where it is now. Because again, there was this buildup that Desmond would be the final, you know, entry to in, into Assassin's Creed. But this video isn't about the same Assassin's Creed; it's about Desmond. The first few games increase the time you spend out of the Animus. Some of them, like AC2, literally starts you off with you playing as Desmond, breaking out of a struggle with Lucy. You don't even start with, as, as like any kind of introduction to the assassin, to like the assassins or Ezio. You literally just start off by trying to break out of a struggle. Revelation starts off with Desmond talking to Subject 616. So again, you're starting the game off with Desmond. A core plot point of the franchise was the bleeding effect, an effect on Desmond from, from being in the Animus for too long, him learning the abilities and fighting prowess of each assassin that he learned from all his all his um his ancestors that he experienced inside the Animus. I remember thinking what a modern AC game would be like, how it'd probably have, you know, the bitches of Uncharted or Tomb Raider, but with the Assassin's Creed gameplay. Again, at that time, I think this was the most popular thought as well on people just uh, thinking of what will Assassin's Creed be like when it's just Desmond and not you playing as his ancestors. The other thing about Desmond and his death is that it also is also where, you know, the driving plot of the series kind of died. Desmond's ancestry and his fight against Astergo was a big part of the plot. So the whole Assassin's versus Templars was a big part of the plot in Desmond as well. It was the ever moving plot for each game to game. You know, it was what connected each game. Every new game was you know, which ancestor would experience from Desmond. Like that's how every game back in the day was against Assassin's Creed. Which ancestor will experience when it came to anything about, about theorizing the future. When it comes to feudal Japan and you know Egypt and things like that, before you know orders came out, before Red was announced, you know the thought process was which, which ancestors are going to deal with, and, and we're just like hypothesizing like what we could see with, with Desmond's ancestry. Modern AC games miss a lot of this. Clearly, Ubisoft wanted to bring this idea of a modern day character we follow from the, from game to game back because Layla exists. So you, clearly, Ubisoft didn't want to abandon that, but they had already killed off Desmond, so they didn't know what to do. And here we are, you know, she's even more disliked than Desmond, though th there could be other reasons for that. Not going to get into that. It's, it's irrational when it comes to why people don't like Layla. We're not getting into that conversation, but her existence is because they killed off Desmond. Like, let's not deny that. Desmond's death made them create Layla because they feel like we need to have someone to, you know, to, to be their bridge. They wouldn't have her otherwise. And at this point, after the events of Valhalla, you know, that, that thought, is back that's at, that at some point there will be a game set in the modern times where you play as Layla only 
we can only hope that it's not the case because she's not interesting and we also feel like she's kind of forced on us because they killed off desmond and they need this one to be her replacement as much as i actually don't mind layla there is a bit of a pain in that thought because that is the, the, that's rightfully desmond's spot the ability to have a modern day assassin's creed game is rightfully desmond's everything we went through ac1 ac2 brotherhood revelations Assassin's Creed 3 before his death was leading up to something with him as a main character of his own game we never got that payoff and, and and that sucks it sucks to like think about you know going back to those games and go, like if you're a Assassin's Creed fan go back right now and go play through ac1 2 brother relations and Assassin's Creed 3 you will feel like this you will feel this build up and how much it sucks that you just didn't get that payoff and it's not like Ubisoft couldn't continue the series after that. They could have went with this this thought and they introduced Layla as like Desmond's daughter. You know, he grows he grows up, meets someone, um, has a kid, and becomes kind of what his own father was for him. But for Layla, if she was written to be his daughter, I think a lot of things would be different for Layla as a character and how she's received by the by the gamers. Remember what makes Desmond special is his ancestry, not the rest of the, the assassin's ancestry themselves. By that I mean not every assassin in the Brotherhood is special. Desmond is because his bloodline, his bloodline, you know, comes from the fact that the, the Isu were intermixing with, you know, humans who, who are part of his bloodline. The other assassins, not all of them, some of them still, some of them do have that, that, that Isu, you know, mix, but not all of them have it. It's, it's a rare thing. It's what makes Desmond and his family line special. Again, all of this kind of just leaves a void in the game since Desmond's death. Each of them feel like there's something missing and that something is Desmond. Layla cannot replace that and Ubisoft knows that was just how little we, we are out of the animus with her. You know, Desmond, you were out of the animus with him a lot. Well, Layla is very rare because Ubisoft knows we don't care about her and they kind of don't either. She just exists to try to move the plot for, for the modern times, even though they don't need her to. They could have just did something else in this, in this specific uh, uh, spot. Hell, Mirage doesn't even have her in the game at all. Mirage, there is no out of animus moments. It's just an Assassin's Creed game. No, no animus moments involved in it. No modern day character, just the same story, and that's it. Some people, you younger gamers who, who don't want to have to, to like play older games, might understand the importance of a connection to this franchise. This franchise put a lot into the Bloodline, pun intended. There's a PSP game, you know, Assassin's Creed game called Bloodlines. Um, but the connection is, is important. We see that even in, with Ezio. He might be the mass majority of the gamer's favorite assassin's character. But in lore, every assassin, except for those from the hidden ones, you know, since they do predate, you know, the assassins themselves and predate Altair, every assassin is trying to live up to who Altair was. In Assassin's Creed Revelations, Ezio is seeing visions of Altair. And he's off hinting at, at him chasing a ghost, which is a metaphor expression, if you will. If, if you're sport fans, you, you probably know this expression you probably heard the saying of you know someone being a ghost like you're they're chasing the ghost of michael jordan this expression is literally just means to chase or pursue something that is elusive or impossible to obtain in this context nobody can can be the master assassin that altair was you can get the rank of master assassin but you never be who altair was he's considered the best at everything the best swordsman the best assassin he saved the brotherhood and made it great again a lot about altair is just this, this myth you know, Ezio achieves the rank of Master Assassin. He's the leader of the entire Brotherhood, but he's still chasing that ghost. Even the tutorial in relations is you following Altair. That connection is missing now. Sure, Cassandra is related to, to Layla and, uh, and Aya, but that doesn't feel the same as Desmond related to Altair and Ezio and Edward Kenway and Dunagaton. You know, which modern assassins are related to like the Frey twins or Shay um, and Arno is unknown at the moment, unless you be so considered the, the movie's canon. Then we do know who's related to Arno, and that would be you know Cullum uh, Lynch, Michael Fassbender, the character in the in the, the movie. You know, his ancestor is not just Aguilar, but also Arno. But again, that's if you saw does or doesn't consider the movie's be canon. So let's let's wrap this rambling video off by talking about what I'd want you saw to do. I don't think retconning Desmond's death is the answer. I feel like most people who watch the video be like, are you saying bring Desmond back to life? No, I don't think retconning you know, his death or having some kind of like weird way he's revived is the answer. The answer is reestablishing a connection and moving past Layla. That answer is Elijah. Now, some of you, probably most of you are going to go, who's Elijah? Well, Elijah's Desmond's son. Desmond didn't know he had a son, um, but Elijah is Desmond's son. Elijah's mother, you know, who thinks unknown, is currently dead. Uh, this is something from the comics, and the comics aren't canon. 
I think right now is a good time to introduce Elijah to the games. He's a comic book character. Um, most gamers who, who play the games aren't going to read those comics. It's just a general thing. Most people who play video games aren't also comic book readers. Look at Halo. People aren't reading Halo books who play Halo games, like the mass majority of those people. Same thing comes like Mass Effect. People aren't really reading Mass Effect books when it comes to being a Mass Effect fan. The same thing comes here. A lot of you probably don't even know who Elijah is, and are probably confused as hell when I mention that name. Introducing Elijah will create a new interest in Assassin's Creed. We'll get people in, in content creation talking about the franchise again with huge intrigue. He is needed to be the plot device. You know, you can retcon his mother's background and make it to where secretly she was a Templar trying to have, have a kid with an assassin for Sturgo's research, but her conscience made it better, better of her and you know, she tried to get Elijah to the assassins and where she ended up dying at the hands of, of the Templars. And the, Elijah, you know, seeing his mother die Templars, he becomes even more interested in becoming an assassin himself. You could write this into a game where you visit, you know, answers of, of Elijah and ancestors of Templar who later switch to the assassins. It's just an idea. I think it'd just be a cool thing to see, to, 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 to have this, that connection of family back with Assassin's Creed and to also just introduce Elijah to the, to the main stage in general. You know, if you want to move past Layla, you can move past Layla. You can have it to where Layla is actually a descendant from, from Basim or from Aaron Away. Uh, Basim kind of has like a love towards Layla and he convinces her to join, join him. And you can have Basim become like this, this penultimate evil in Assassin's Creed where he's not a Templar or an assassin anymore. He just has his goal to end the world because he feels like he has to. And you can have Elijah be the person who, who's trying to save the world, you know, in a modern Assassin's Creed game and, and overcoming uh, Basim. There's just some thoughts here. These are all just, you know, spitball night ideas. But... That is it for this video, you know, just, you know, kind of like a, I don't call it a theory video. It's kind of just a conversation just to have. I um, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Y'all stay safe. Be kind to one of your boy, Nubis. Um, follow me on Twitch. Link me drop my spot. Blah, blah. Link me in the spot below. See you guys when I see you. Y'all stay safe. I'm out here. Deuces.